I'm very pleased to tell you the sad story of PSA, actually. You know, before we had PSA, one out of three, up to one out of two men, died from prostate cancer when they were detected. This means that they were detected too late. Then PSA came around the 80s, and as a consequence, we had much more patients detected, and there was an increase in incidence because we overdiagnosed and sometimes overtreated. But by applying PSA, the mortality from prostate cancer has come down dramatically, much more than in ODI and any other malignant disease in the human being. The progress made in prostate cancer survival, not dying any longer of prostate cancer, is most dramatic for prostate indeed, not for breast, not for bladder, but for prostate cancer. Now this has been achieved by maybe overdiagnosing and overtreating patients. And the consequence of that is that people started to say it's a disease of old men, you don't die from prostate cancer, you die with prostate cancer. So there have been big arguments against the use of PSA. The United States Task Force have warned against PSA. In my country, PSA has been stopped being reimbursed. Patients have to pay from their pocket. In the UK, in the Netherlands, general practitioners do not want to take PSA because they believe we shouldn't do it because of the overdiagnosis and the overtreatment. And what is the consequence? The sad consequence is that today, in the UK, 65% of men are detected with prostate cancer in a too late stage to be easily cured. What is the consequence? They become diagnosed with prostate cancer, but they get progressive, they become metastatic, and after becoming metastatic and being castrated, they then become castrate refractory. Now, if you look at the cost of treatment of early disease, a PSA determination costs 9 euros. A multiparametric MRI costs 150 euros in my country. It's more expensive in others. The treatment of early disease is 5,000 euros for surgery. Radiotherapy, another 5,000. And that's the cost. And the cost of the treatment for the two last years of a castrated man that's going to die from prostate cancer costs 240,000 euros. We see we have had a steep decline in mortality, but now today in the United States you see that the mortality from prostate cancer is increasing. This means that by not doing PSA properly or by arguing against PSA, more men today die from prostate cancer than they did five years ago. So we need to go back in history. We need to design properly performed population structured PSA screening starting at 45, following the guidelines of the EAU on how to do it. Stop screening people that are not at risk and save money there. And finally, get up with stages uh, detection of prostate cancer when people can be cured rather cheaply. So we need to reintroduce in order to further decrease the mortality and not allowing that it will increase. We will see an increase in mortality in the United Kingdom, we will see an increase in mortality in Western European countries where PSA is not done. Opportunistic screening is not a good solution. We need a well-structured PSA-based screening for the, our healthy male population, starting early enough in order not to miss any aggressive cancers. The guidelines state very clearly that we should not take a PSA sample in a patient that comes for checking his diabetes or his cholesterol and not just take the PSA without informing him. We must inform the patient that when a PSA is drawn and the result is in one or another direction, it might well be that he needs to have a physical exam, a digital rectal examination, maybe an MRI, that maybe he might warrant treatment 
with negative consequences eventually. We know that from radical prostatectomy, the minority of patients, 2-3%, might suffer some incontinence. Some will have less potency than before the treatment. When you got radiation treatment and you need hormones, this also has side effects. So we need to inform the patient fully. But if a young man today knows that with doing PSA, you can avoid dying from prostate cancer, which is so many people. You know, there is more men dying from prostate cancer today than women from breast cancer. If you look at colorectal cancer, there is colorectal cancer screening, there is breast cancer screening, there is cervix cancer screening. There's nothing for the prostate. But more men die from prostate cancer than from colorectal. And more than women from breast cancer. And nothing is done for men. So we need to talk to the politicians, to the European Parliament, to the Commission, to convince them in the revision of their guidelines and recommendations to not only have colorectal cervix and breast, but finally, to look at the most common and the second killing cancer in males, which is prostate cancer. We, we have had the trials, they have been done. There was a trial in the United States, it was the, the PCLO. It didn't show any difference, for the simple reason that in the non-screened arm, about everybody had a PSA drawn at a certain point in time. So this is not a good study, this is not a clean study. Then we have had the European randomized screening trial, we have had the Göteborg trial in Sweden, and there's been a sub-analysis recently from the Rotterdam cohort in the ERSPC study, where you see that mortality and metastatic disease in the screening arm, not contaminated with wild screening in the other arm, there is a decreased mortality and metastatic rate of 52 and 54 percent after 19 years. This is enormous. This is enormous. There is really no reason not to reintroduce a well-structured PSA screening in a well-informed patient. Mm -hmm.